I will be recording the session this evening. And um, so if you wanted to come back and view it or just had questions, we can send it to you. So I wanted to first of all, welcome you to new student orientation for the June 1st session. We're so excited to have you here. My name is Jennifer Greenwood. I'm just your host this evening. I work in student services and you can reach out to me or my team on the address shown there on the screen. We have a couple of different uh, ways for, for you to get a hold of uh, us. Uh, but I will be conducting the session today. So feel free to reach out to me directly if you have any questions. We're gonna talk about some opportunities for you to reach out to us tomorrow if you need help. Uh, we're gonna go over the classroom and we're gonna talk a little bit about the different features available at the campus. Um, tonight, uh, we'll cover a quick campus welcome with our campus director, Jamie Carson, who's here. Thanks, Jamie, for being here. I will review some of the important contacts that you'll need to get to know when you're here. We'll review some of the academic requirements for your programs. Uh, we'll talk about who to reach out to when you have questions or if you need help. Then we're going to do some technical review. We're going to explain a little bit about your student account, your student email address. We will show you how to get into our student portal and the kinds of things that you can find inside the student portal. We'll then log into the online classroom and we'll wrap up with a quick checklist for success for the weekend and also open up for live um, question and answer. So I'd like to turn it over first to Jamie Carson, just to give you a quick campus welcome, talk a little bit about my Brookline why. Jamie, it's all you. Thank you, Jen. All You're right, welcome. I'll go on. Oh, you cannot start your bit. Oh, you can't, I, you can't see my video. I was going to go on video so you all could just see my face and, and humanize me. I don't and know. And that is so odd. I don't really know why. So let me try if I change your role. One sec. <laughs> see if that works for you. I'm yeah, so no sorry. problem. No, no, no. It's totally fine. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so as I already stated, everyone, can, uh, welcome. Welcome to the campus. We're really excited to have you joining us. Um, I'm Jamie Carson. As the campus director, um, I am obviously responsible for the institution as a whole and the support and success of our students, our staff, and our faculty. And I take that really, really seriously. Um, and what we have found to be true is that if we understand your why, we have a much better chance of helping you to be su successful. And what I mean by that, um, you know, students, you are here for a program, but each of you are here for a different type of program. But the reason that you're here is all different. And that's really what we need to know. Because if we understand who you are authentically, then we can support you in the ways that are going to help you to be successful. So I would love for you to share with us in the chat feature and notice how I, well, I already started one chat. I asked just, where do you guys live? I mean, this is online. So you are all located in different parts of the country, um, but I'd love for you to share your why. Why are you here? You know, are you a first generation college student? Um, are you here to get a different type of degree because you want more opportunity? Uh, but maybe you're also just wanting to do something for yourself or to make your family proud. You know, there's so many different reasons and we really do wanna know um, what that is. My Brookline why is very simple. It is about you. It's about the faculty and the staff. And, um, you know, we had a leadership meeting today and it was, you know, what are some of the things that keep you motivated? And for me, it's about those light bulb moments. It's when you start to grasp something, maybe that's a new concept or, you know, you find a passion in your career. But for my staff, it's when they are able to achieve greatness because they're seeing the success in all of you. you know, that is truly what motivates me every single day. Um, we have open door policies here at online. I know it's virtual, but we truly do. You have my contact information there. You can pull out your cell phone and you can add my phone number. You can add my email. Uh, we definitely want to hear from you. So um, thank you so much. Again, uh, we're excited to have you. You're going to get a lot of information. Just soak it all in. But don't worry if you don't remember all of it. You have all of our contact information for after. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over now to um, Dr. Amar Katanani. He is our Director of Education. Dr. Q. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you, everyone, for being part of this orientation. Each one of you will have a big impact, as Jamie mentioned. <clears throat> in order to, to know why we're here, we need to know why we are joining this program, what's the purpose? So each one of you has their own purpose and each one of you will have uh, 
an impact on each one of, of us, each one of you also. Uh, remember this time goes so fast and you are here to learn something, to apply this knowledge and skills to be succeed in the field. And so important for us as an academic support here to make sure you are fully supported. You have all the tools you need in order to be succeed in the online environment. And we'll make sure you are moving to the next level where you want to be proud of yourself and, proud, and uh, your family proud and your friends proud of you. Um, team, please don't hesitate to student to contact me anytime if you need anything. You got my um, email here information. I'm here for you to support you in any way I can. And congratulations on taking the first step. And uh, I cannot wait to see you graduate from this school. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Q. We really appreciate that. Um, someone that is important, but I don't think was able to make it this evening, but we still wanted to introduce you. And that is your director of admissions, Margaret Bowling. Um, she is the person that is uh, supporting the individuals that are working with you directly to help you become enrolled. So if there's anything outstanding, like um, paperwork or things like that, uh, Margaret, you might have heard from her already or one of the team members. So just know uh, that she is the person that you can reach out to if you do have some questions. Um, there are a couple of other important contacts we wanted to share with you. One of those is our financial aid director, uh, Jamie Jarabek. Jamie and her financial aid team helps uh, with things like FAFSA updates. So once a year, we typically have you do a FAFSA renewal, and they'll be the team that will reach out to talk to you about that. They'll also be the team that prepares your financial aid award. So if you have financial plan questions, you can talk with them. And while they are involved in setting up your tuition payments, if you have trouble making payments, that's actually our business office, which I don't have here, but I do have it on another slide. So just bear with me while we get there, but just know financial aid, award, FAFSA, student loans, scholarships, that is financial aid. Okay, another person that's going to be really important to you in your education with us is your student services specialist and advisor, David Majaka. And in student services, we help with things like this, new student orientation, getting you acclimated into the classroom, helping you navigate. David will also reach out to you by phone email or text regarding your attendance if you happen to be missing school, and he might even be reaching out to you to advise you on any classes that you're earning below a 70% C, because that is what is ultimately required in order for you to graduate. You must have a 2.0 or higher in order to complete your program. So David will be reaching out to you with ideas on strategies on how to improve your grades if you're having any problems. He'll also be able to refer you to various services that we have, like counseling or tutoring. We also have on the screen our director, or regional director rather, of career services, Natasha Perrick. Now, in career services, the team helps with things like resume writing and reviewing, interview and interview prep rather, which is mock interviews. They will work with you to source out job leads and perform placement support. So while you might not hear from these individuals right away, they're always available if you're in the middle of maybe working somewhere right now, maybe you want to begin to transition into the field a little bit earlier, this team can help you with that. You'll be hearing from these various departments throughout your tenure with us here at the school. Also very important to know is who your program director is. Now, if you're joining us for medical office administration, allied health, our health and wellness bachelor of science, or a bachelor of science in healthcare, you're going to be working with Michelle Kelch. Now, I know that Michelle Kelch is here today, and I would love to hear from you, Michelle, if you'd like to share. Are you with, with us there, Michelle? I am sorry about <gasps> that. Hi. Oh, I, was just hi. I, was I saw her. I knew she was here. <laughs> it's I was just midnight for Michelle, so. <laughs> She is dedicated, right. everyone. Yes. <laughs> I, I was actually in, in the chat there. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. And um, I just wanted to let you all know that we are um, here for you. 
to support you. I remember um, being a first generation student myself and navigating college, nav navigating life and everything else that is going to come along your way and pull you in 101 directions. I am here to keep you on track and keep you motivated and keep you um, towards your goal of graduation. So if you need anything, you do have my direct number. I also want to mention to you that number, you can send me a text. So um, if you can't really call at the moment, but want to send me a text message, we can um, chat that way as well. Um, always feel free to reach out to me. So welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle. Thank we you. Also, we also have who you already heard from, Dr. Q. Dr. Q is our program director for all of our master's programs. So if you're a master of science in healthcare administration or public administration or public health, Dr. Q is who you'll be working with. And just know if you're joining us at the diploma level, maybe you'll decide to go through our allied health program or our bachelor of science and maybe even go the whole way through to a master's program. So you'll get to know us during that time and we would love to have you as a student continue with us to achieve all of your academic goals. So thanks to Michelle, Dr. Q and Jamie for being here. We're going to now move into some of the academic requirements uh, that are really important for you to know about as a student. And they all start with and end with the academic catalog or the college catalog. Now our college catalog can actually be found right on our website. It is the best place to look at it because it's always updated. Anytime we make any changes, we're gonna update it and put it out there for you to see. So you wanna know this catalog because it does include important policies on financial aid, academics, student services, career services, graduation, and more. Pretty much anything you'd like to know. Now it might be a little bit confusing to you to understand, that's what the student services team is here for. We can help you with questions that you might have about the catalog. And if we have to, we'll refer you to your program director or to director of education if it's something that we can't help you with. So just get to know that catalog. Um, we don't expect you to read the whole thing, but just at least know where it is and let us know if you have questions. A couple of the policies covered in the catalog though that I would like to review with you are going to be around participation and attendance requirements, and then what we consider to be satisfactory academic progress. So we'll go over these items. And the first one is participation. We really require our students to participate in class a minimum of three days a week. We do this by spreading out assignments for you so you can have time to do bits and pieces throughout the week rather than trying to cram everything into one day. So for example, in the online environment, we have discussion posts that you do that take the place of a live classroom interaction. And in those discussion posts, you're going to be required to post by Wednesday and also reply to two other students by Sunday. Right there, you could have three days and you'd meet the requirement from a participation perspective. But assignments, quizzes, those discussion posts, and also papers, they're spread all throughout the week to help you manage the workload and also to encourage that three day a week participation. Now from an attendance perspective, that's a little bit different. We want you to understand what counts as attendance and what doesn't count as attendance. Students are marked attended on the days that they turn in an assignment, complete a quiz, complete a discussion post, submit a paper or do some other gradable item. In some of our classes, you will notice that we have what we call in textbook assignments, and we use a service called MindTap for that. We're gonna take a look at that in a little bit more detail, but just be aware that any of these things that I mentioned counts as attendance. Now, one thing that's different though is reading and reviewing content really doesn't count as attendance. You have to turn in a gradable item for that. And just note that if for some reason, and God forbid this never happens to you, that you ever come close to missing 14 days, you'll hear from us quite a, quite a few times, but if a student were to miss 14 days of class, that's 14 you know, calendar days, you could be in violation of the attendance policy and would be withdrawn. So it's really important if something happens, let's say that you get into a car crash, you total your car, you can't turn a paper in on time, maybe you become injured and then you're out for a few days. It's just really important that you notify us so that we can work with your instructor to make um, arrangements you can reach directly up to your instructor or your program director. Just let one of us know so that we know you're having an issue because we have some different things we can do to help you. So what counts as attendance? Well, submitting that discussion post that we talked about does, submitting a writing assignment, completing that in-textbook mind tap assignment, taking a quiz. But some of the things that aren't attendance, which may surprise you, are things like going into the class and just reading announcements. That doesn't count. 
opening up your e-textbook and reading that, it doesn't count either. Um, if you attend one of your optional live lectures or watch a live lecture recording, again, that's just to enhance your learning and is not considered attendance. Same with doing library research or simply typing a paper. We have no way to actually see that you're doing that, so that isn't attendance either. But there's plenty of opportunity for you to attend, so don't worry about having an opportunity to do that, okay? The other piece of this is satisfactory academic progress. Satisfactory academic progress applies to all students in every program, and we actually have to make sure that you are being successful in order for you to maintain eligibility for your financial aid, or if you're using VA benefits, you have to be progressing through the program. Satisfactory academic progress, depending on your program, will be measured either every three terms or every four terms, and that is called a payment period. Some of our programs are three, some are four. If you're not sure, let us know, we can look into it for you. But to just keep it simple, think every three classes, they're gonna review me and see if I'm meeting the requirements. And if I'm not meeting the requirements, there's a chance in my last bullet point, as it indicates, that you can be placed in what we call a financial aid academic warning status, which means we can see you're struggling. So we're going to encourage you to do better. We're going to advise you. We're going to recommend things like tutoring. Or if you're having personal problems, we might recommend counseling to you through the free services that we're going to talk about here. But just know that if it continues, you could potentially be dismissed. Nobody comes into school thinking they would be dismissed. And so it's really important to us to let you know what to expect and what to shoot for when you're in your classes. So on the chart that you see here, if you're in any of our programs, all of your core classes, you must get a 70% C in order to pass. If you don't get a C, then you will be required to repeat the course and you only get one retake. And that's kind of indicated here at the bottom of the slide. So you get two attempts at each class. For general education courses, you'll only have those if you're in an associate's or bachelor's degree with us, and you need to get a 60% or higher. Again, we don't want you shooting for a 60%. We want you actually shooting for as high as you can go, but definitely above a 70%. And then the minimum grade point average or cumulative grade point average that's required across all the classes you take is a C average, and that's a 2.0. And that's listed here for diploma associate and bachelors. But if you're in your master's degree, it's a B average that you need to get. And remember, we'll reach out to you. If we can tell that you're failing a class, we're going to reach out to you and we're going to offer you some different versions um, of help. OK, um, if you need help and you're not sure who to contact, that's what this slide is all about. So if you are having problems with navigation, getting into your ebooks, using Microsoft Office, you want to contact student services at onln-ss at brooklinecollege.edu. Now, this email address is actually in our online system, so you shouldn't have any problem finding it. If you have questions about financial aid, that information is also in the student portal and online, but the email alias is here on the screen for you. If you'd like to write it down, it's a, quite a mouthful there. It's all dash financial aid dash bc dash online at brooklinecollege.edu. And then if you have questions about your tuition payment plan, the business office is who you want to reach out to. Their alias is on the screen. And then any questions you have about current course materials, your course content, your grades, any of that stuff, you always want to start out with your instructor directly. Faculty email addresses, telephone numbers, office hours, live lecture appointments, all that stuff's right in your class. And we're going to show you where that is. And then finally, these last two bullets. If you have question about transfer of credit coming into the program, your degree progress, or just general feedback about how you think the program is or your course is, you definitely want to let your program director know. Now, you did meet them a little bit earlier today, but that's Michelle Kelch for our undergraduate programs. And then for our master's students, that's Dr. Katanani. Okay. And then finally, if you have questions about job opportunities, resume writing, and career planning, well, we can connect you right up to student, I'm sorry, career services and make sure that they help you out. Now, we did talk a little bit about other types of help like tutoring and counseling. And that's what I'm gonna cover on these next couple of slides. Inside of the online classroom, you have access to live instant tutoring help for a variety of topics. There are two main topics that are 24 by seven that are probably the most popular and that's English, which includes writing and math, which includes things like college algebra. They are 24 by seven. You can talk with the tutor directly over the phone, 
over your computer and you can also sh share screens with them so you can show them what you're working on and what you have a problem with. You also have access to submit writing assignments into the writing lab for a review. Your paper gets sent back to you with comments and feedback so that you can update it before you turn it in for a final grade. You can also just submit a question if you want to. And then there's a number of other items like skill building, AccuPlacer, flashcards, something called eParachute where you can kind of discover what some of your strengths and talents are. So there's a number of things available within that tool. And I'm going to show you where to find it here shortly. Same with WellConnect. We offer a free service called WellConnect. You have access to free online video or face-to-face, -face, even telephone counseling through WellConnect. And the, the goal here is if something's getting in your way of being successful, you know, all our lives are, you know, all, all aspects of our lives are connected, right? So if you're having a relationship problem, if you're having financial issues, if you're having dependency issues, maybe you're having issues with childcare, WellConnect is here to help connect you to some resources. They do have legal and financial consultants. They can provide in the minute support. And we can refer you if you would prefer us to do that, or you can contact them directly yourself. Just reach out to us and let us know that you'd like to have more information about that, and we would give that to you. So we've talked a little bit about getting help, some of the resources, we've introduced you to some great people. Next up is we're actually gonna talk about some of the technical aspects of being a student with us online. And that starts off with your student account. We're gonna look at things like your email account, getting into our student portal and into the classroom. Now, we know that a lot of you probably haven't yet gotten into the systems yet. So tomorrow, Friday, we have a session that's gonna run about two hours long. It's drop-in, which means you can come anytime during that two hour window. And if you're in Arizona, that is 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. But I have all the time zones here right on the screen. So one to three Eastern, 12 to two Central, 11 to one mountain and 10 to 12 uh, Pacific time. Then on start day, we're skipping Monday. Normally our starts around Monday, but it's a holiday. On Tuesday, we have actually two help sessions and all of those times are on the screen. Now these help session invitations are gonna be emailed to you um, this evening after the session is over so that you can register for them. Uh, you can also reach out to us if these times don't work for you we can set a one-on-one -on -one appointment up to get you logged in as well so never worry we are here to support you the next thing we're going to talk a little bit about though is just to give you a high level overview of how to actually get into all of the different systems that we have and then do a little bit of a review of the online classroom now i happen to know that i saw some of you at cc 100 so if you had attended CC100, some of this you've heard before, but it definitely doesn't hurt to listen again. So if you don't mind hanging out to listen to this, after we go over some of the tech stuff, we're gonna wrap up with your next steps for the weekend, okay? So your student account really is important because it will get you into Office 365, your student email, the portal, and the online classroom from the student portal. So the first thing that we need to do in our three-step process is actually activate your student email account. If we don't do that first, you will not be able to log into the portal because you have to update your password as well as your cell phone number for security reasons. So you must do that first. We're gonna talk a little bit about how you access your email. If you haven't heard this already, you should have received an email when you enrolled with a student email address and a temporary password. With that comes a free Microsoft Office 365 account and Outlook email account from Microsoft as well. These are required to get logged in and those instructions would have been sent to you when you initially enrolled, but don't worry if you're not sure what they are, we can look them up for you, send that information to you and even reset your password for you quite easily, okay? So I wanted to just show you at a high level what you would do to activate your student email account. Now you'll go to office.com to set that up. It's pretty simple. You'll click on the sign in button, enter in your username and your temporary password. The system will actually prompt you to create a new password. I'm going to show you screenshots of that here in a moment. And then you'll verify your email account and telephone number for future password resets. And on these screenshots, I'm just going to go through it quickly because I want you to know, don't worry about it tonight. If you can't get in, we can get you in tomorrow during the day. Not a problem at all. These screenshots are just, just to give you an idea of how this works, okay? So you'll go to office.com if you haven't already done this, you'll click on sign in. 
and then you'll follow the screen prompts. I took a couple of quick screenshots for you where you enter in your email address, you enter in your temporary password, and then you update that password. Then the system's gonna actually ask you to enter in your cell phone number. The reason for this is we take your security seriously. So when you come to log into our systems, you will be prompted to enter in a six digit text message code that's unique to you. And it changes every single time you do it. So you will need to go ahead and enter in your cell phone number when you get to this step. And then you'll have the system text you. The system will text you a six digit code. You'll verify that code by entering it in. And then you'll know that you've achieved um, the authentication when you see the little green check mark beside your phone number. Now you don't need to set up an email, but you can. You'll simply enter the email and have the system send you a message. The message doesn't come from Brookline though. It comes from Microsoft Office. Sometimes people overlook it. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like. It is MS Online Services Team. And the message says Unitech Learning Account Email Verification Code. Now, Unitech Learning is our parent company. You'll notice that when we have the email open right in this subject line at the top here, it says Unitech College, Brookline College, Eagle Gate and Provo. Those are a big family of schools. We're one big family here. And in that message, you'll see a six digit code. Again, you'll do exactly the same thing you just did. You'll re-enter that code and click finish. It's a pretty straightforward process. You'll know that you're finished with that when it actually asks you to stay signed in and shows you your landing page. Now, what I'd like to do is actually go into a live environment because nobody really likes to watch a bunch of PowerPoint slides. I'd rather show you how the system actually works. So let me go ahead and get in there for you so you can take a look at it, okay? So this is what happens when you have activated your Microsoft Office account. Now, I have lots of documents. You don't have all these, okay? You might just see good evening. You might even see good evening and then your name. What I wanna point out to you with Office 365 is on the left navigation, you'll see that you have a variety of applications over here. The most commonly used ones are Word for writing papers, Excel for doing mathematical or other formula related financial things like accounting, and then PowerPoint is in here for presentations, but right underneath that is the Outlook button. Now, I want you to click on it if you can, if you're following along. Otherwise, I'm just going to demonstrate for you that when you click on one of the apps, it will open a new browser tab. And then that actually takes me into my email. This is a lot like what you might see. I'll go ahead and click on an email. This is just my work email, but for you, you have the same layout. So if you wanted to send a message, you could just click on new message. You could type in a message here and hit send. We want you to regularly check this inbox because we do send administrative announcements, events, and things like that here. It's going to be a little bit different than your in-classroom inbox, so I just wanted to call that out. Again, your school email can be found here under the Outlook app, and I'm actually going to show you how to access your email on your cell phone too here in just a second. Before I do that though, I want to show you that you do have access to install Microsoft Office on up to five different machines by clicking on Install Office in this upper right corner. And then you'll simply follow the prompts in order to run the setup file. Say yes to start installing the software. It takes about 20 minutes, but then you're going to want to stay online because you will need to log in with your school email address and password in order to fully activate the software that you've downloaded. So just know, again, that you can put that on up to five different machines, okay? So from here, I'm actually going to uh, pause my screen, and I don't know if everyone saw that, but here's where I clicked on Outlook. Just wanted to show you there's Office. Clicked on Outlook. I can click on a new message, okay? And that's how you get to your email from the Office page. But like I said, not everybody really wants to access um, their email from a computer. Maybe you want to use your cell phone. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that there is a Microsoft Outlook app that you can use. You can access your student email account from your phone and never miss a message from school. You'll look for Microsoft Outlook in your app store and then simply add account and enter in your email address and password and you'll be good to go. Okay. So if you've been able to get in and activate your office account, now you'll actually be able to get into our online systems for school. Step two is all about logging into the student portal. When your account for office has been activated, 
you'll go to my.brooklinecollege.edu. And in the upper right corner, as shown in my screenshot here, you will click on the login button. Then once you see the drop down menu, the very first item at the top is the student portal homepage. Whoops, if you click on that, that will actually take you into the student portal, which should look a little bit like what we're seeing. The main thing that you want to notice here is on the left hand side, so we're going to spend most of our time, I'm going to show you a couple of the menu items on the left that you might want to look at, but then we're going to take you into the classroom and that's going to be through this external links button here at the bottom. Before we go there, though, I blew out the menu here so you could take a look at it. Um, there are some items in here that a lot of people ask about. So when you're in the student portal in your left hand menu, you have an academics button. On that button, you can actually view your attendance. You can print unofficial transcripts. Once you start to receive grades, you can see things like your grade point average. You can actually look at your final grades. Um, there's a GPA calculator in there. A couple of the other buttons um, are the My Finances button. That's where you have access to things like your 1098T at the end of the year for your taxes. And then the My Financial Aid is where your award letter will appear. Now, again, I said that we're going to look at external links because that's where your online classroom is. So once inside of the student portal, we move on to step three, which is actually logging into Canvas, your online classroom. So you'll click on external links. You'll then cook click on Brookline College Online, and then the center of the page will change. And you'll see this picture, and you'll also notice that there is something else to click on here, which is this Brookline Canvas LMS. Now this does trip up some students because when they click on it, they'll call us and they'll say, nothing's happening, I can't get in here. And the reason why is if it's your first time clicking on this, the system is actually gonna block your pop-ups. Most browsers, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, if that doesn't open, it is because there is a pop-up blocker. And that's normal, that just happens and it's for your protection. So just follow the steps on the screen. If you're using Google Chrome or Firefox, Google Chrome can be different depending on the version of your browser. But usually what you're doing is you'll find a little red box with a white X in it or an X like we see on the screen here. And you'll simply click on this. It'll be in the upper right corner of your browser screen. I'd actually like to show that to you where to find it because a lot of times people get confused when they see my little screenshot here. So what I'd like to show you actually is where to find that pop-up blocker. So let me go ahead and grab this and I'm gonna show you that's going to be right up here next to the little star. If you have a pop-up blocker running, what that will look like is it will be a little red box with a white X right there. So that's where you want to look in that upper right corner of your screen. So I just wanted to make that clear. I'll go ahead and clear my drawings here. And then I'm going to go back to my presentation. Once you have allowed the pop-ups, you will need to go and click on that link one more time and let me go ahead and show you this link so you will need to re-click on the canvas lms link okay the next thing that i want to point out is once you have re-clicked on that if you've allowed your pop-ups you should see that canvas acceptable use policy screen simply click on the i agree and click on submit and that should take you into canvas which we're going to do a quick live nav in um, here in a moment so the Canvas dashboard looks like this. What we'll do now is we're going to go live and we're going to go over some key navigation areas. We'll look at our dashboard. We'll look at our courses. We'll navigate the home and syllabus page. We'll review modules, which is where your coursework will be. We'll take a look at where grades are and we'll look at pages, which is a resource area. After we do that, we'll also show you the CC100, which is your practice course, will show you how to complete your practice syllabus acknowledgement quiz, will complete a discussion board practice posting, and will complete an assignment upload. Hopefully we can get this done and get y'all out of here uh, on time. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Just bear with me while I go ahead and share my other screen and get us into a class, okay? So just one second here, and we are gonna go into our classroom. So for me, I am landing on my dashboard and hopefully everyone can see this just fine. Go ahead and hide my little camera thing here. 
And what we're seeing here is the dashboard menu. Yours will look slightly different. You won't have all of these menu items on the left. I have a couple of extra ones like the admin button or the commons button. However, we're gonna start from the top and work our way down and talk about what each of these is for. And then we'll get into the dashboard courses, okay? So the very first button at the top of your screen in the left is the account button. And it is a flyout menu and I'm just clicking on it to show you what it's doing. So, and you can't break it so you can get in here yourselves. We're gonna look at two things in here. And one of them is going to be profile to update your picture. The other one is going to be settings to update your phone number. Let's go ahead and click on profile from the account menu right here. It's gonna change the center of my screen. And what you'll notice is that there's a picture there. Now for a lot of you, there won't be. So I wanna show you how to add your picture. You'll simply hover over the image, click on the pencil, click upload picture or choose picture. And then your, um, you'll be able to search on your computer for photographs. I'll go ahead and grab this one here. I click on open. When I am satisfied with my image, I can click save and then that should populate the little circle. Next, in order to add your cell phone number, we'll click on settings. And then far over to the right here, I'm just gonna actually delete this so I can show you how it works. We're going to come down here and add an additional contact method so we can have our phone number in here. It will be important to put your phone number in and select your cell phone carrier. You will not be able to type in anything down here. It just automatically formats it for you. And then you'll click on register SMS. You should receive a three digit code, which you'll put in here. This is not a real code, so I'm gonna skip this part. I'll just click X and you can see my phone numbers are here, okay? And that's it from the account menu. That's really all, I think that's super pertinent as a new student. As you go through um, you know, time with us, you may find some other things in there that you're interested in looking at, but let's go ahead and click on the dashboard button just to show you that when we're on the dashboard, that's the item that is selected, okay? On the dashboard, you'll see your courses. These are called course cards. And hopefully uh, you are in CC100 Canvas Connect and you should see just this one on your dashboard. You might see your, your um, 6-1 classes over the weekend, but for now you should at least see CC100. If you don't, please let us know in the chat so that we can have student services follow up with you tomorrow to make sure that you can get in. I'm gonna come back to this. I just wanna point out that if you don't see cards, you see something else. I always tell people to check the three little dots to see what dashboard view they have because there are a couple of others and card view seems to be the easiest to read. You'll also see a to-do list for the week that you're in and then anything coming up for the next week here. And that's the dashboard. There is a courses flyout menu. It's just another way to navigate to your courses um, other than using dashboard. I always like the dashboard though. And then there's also a consolidated course calendar on this dashboard navigation. This will show you any due dates um, for all of your classes, but you'll also be able to see them right within the courses themselves as well. They each have their own calendar. Also in the dashboard menu is our inbox. That is where your instructors may message you, but just remember this course inbox is different from your Microsoft email account, your school email account. That school email account is gonna be full of administrative and announcements and things like that. Whereas this inbox is going to be messages from your instructor, okay? So if I come down here um, as an example, if I have a blue dot beside the image here on the left, that means I have an unread message. If that was the case, then one of these would have a blue dot. I could click on it and read it. You can literally click on any of these and then when you read a message from an instructor, for example, you could simply click on the reply button, the little arrow in order to reply. I'm just gonna say testing one, two, three <laughs> there, and then hit send. If you wanted to compose a brand new message, let's get this out of the way, and um, to compose a brand new message, you just come up here in this middle area. And if you hover over any button in here, it's pretty self-explanatory what everything is. But to compose a new message, you'll simply select the course that you want to send a message to. Say you have an instructor question, you can add your teacher here, and then you can just let them know that you have a question about the assignment, you need some clarification, and then you can click send, okay? The other way that you can though quickly communicate with your instructor that I like to point out is through the help 
flyout menu. So here's help, it's a little question mark. And there is the option to ask your instructor a question right here, choose your course, and then send them that message this way. It's a little quicker. And then when they reply, they'll actually reply to you and it will come through the inbox. And those are the main items within here. I wanna point out that the help button also has a direct email address for student services. There's an email address and an 800 number for technical support. And then of course that asks your instructor a question. All of the other items down below, we usually recommend that you talk to your instructor first as they usually can help you solve whatever the issue is. Okay, and that is the dashboard menu. So thanks for listening to a little bit about the dashboard menu. The next thing I want to quickly do is just give you a basic overview of our practice course and what to expect in your courses for Tuesday. So if you were able to get into your dashboard, hopefully you see this course, CC100 Canvas Connect 61 2021. So in order to access your class, simply click on the card and come into the classroom. I'm going to move to student view, which will make the class look a little bit more like what you would be seeing. And you'll notice there's that account, dashboard, courses, calendar, and all these great buttons here in our left navigation. But you'll notice courses is selected. And we actually now have a course menu here right on the page, right next to our recent announcements from the course. We have landed, and every time you come in through your courses, You'll always first land on the home syllabus page. There will always be recent announcements at the top. There will be a listing of the meeting days and times for your class. So as an online student, the live meetings are optional, but strongly recommended if you can attend them and your instructor will list their meeting days and times right underneath recent announcements. And if you scroll down a little bit more, there will be a link for you to join the meeting. Now in CC100, because it's our practice course offered by student services, if you scroll down, it tells you when the class met. So the last class meeting was actually a couple of days ago, but it says there are additional help sessions shown below and that you only need to attend one. So you don't need to attend. In fact, if you can get in, you don't need to attend any of them, they're optional, but we do have those student drop-in troubleshooting sessions right here. And this is what you'll be receiving after the session today is invitations to attend these. And I highly recommend that you schedule, even if you don't need them, you don't have to show up, okay? But when you're on the home syllabus page, be sure to review each of our recent announcements. And if you couldn't attend a Canvas Connect workshop, which is for the CC100 class, because they're over, if you click on the recent announcements, there is actually a workshop recording right in the class where we go over everything and we'll be able to send that to you. A lot of what we talk about tonight is in there and it all has to do with getting through the classes. You'll notice that on home syllabus, since we clicked on this, the little blue dot disappeared next to this announcement. That just means I read it. So within the Canvas system, when you read a message in the inbox or you read an announcement, the little blue dot goes away. So just be aware of that. And we'd encourage you to read through the rest of these announcements. Make sure you sign yourself up for a session and then read through some of these other items down at the bottom of the page here. They're just some announcements, okay? One of the other things I wanna do is just point out that the announcements field here is just the same thing that you would have seen on that homepage, except it will have all of the announcements, all the ones you've ever read from class, ones from weeks prior, you can go back and reference them on the announcements page. So we've covered home syllabus, we've covered announcements. Modules is, arguably the most important page in every class because it is where the homework assignments are. It's where you're gonna be turning in some of your work. It will also be the same page that your introduction module is on, which we can see underneath your introduction module, it will have your ebook links. Uh, this class actually doesn't have an ebook link, but what I can tell you about the ebook modules is that as a new student, you'll come in, you'll click on the ebook and it will prompt you to create an account. Just recommended, use your school email address and password to create that account. Might keep it a little bit more easy for you since everything's all related to school. You're, it won't make you do that. You could use your, your personal account to create your ebook um, account with, with the system, but we recommend you use the school one. And that would actually appear right underneath the introduction module. 
Okay, so in modules, you'll always want to review all of the introduction items. Once you finish each module, you can actually collapse it to move it out of the way. So there's some navigation tips here for you. Every class will have things like an instructor welcome. So let me just show you what that looks like. Uh, in this class, the instructor welcome um, is really just student services because this is a self-guided class. But if you go back to modules here, that's how you navigate. Okay, so we're gonna hide this. Another thing that's really important in every class is the syllabus acknowledgement. You'll need to review the syllabus by clicking on it. You can download it and it will actually download as a PDF. So make sure you have a PDF viewer. If you click on this, it will open that PDF for us so we can review that syllabus. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that syllabus. Once I've reviewed the syllabus, we have a couple ways of navigating. We can either scroll down to the bottom and click this, this excuse me, this next button in order to get to the syllabus acknowledgement, or we can just go back to modules and click on that syllabus acknowledgement quiz here. The reason why this is so important is because it is a prerequisite to get into module one. You can see everything's um, hidden here and it's locked because we need to do this first. So we'll go ahead and click on the syllabus acknowledgement and what's nice about this page is it shows you a little bit about what a traditional quiz in here would look like. Quizzes, and this syllabus acknowledgement is one, usually will have, in your live classes, will have a due date, points, questions, uh, the time limit if there is one, and if there are multiple attempts allowed. So you get a little bit of a heads up about the um, quiz that you're taking. Sometimes there'll be some instructions on the page, but then when you're ready, you'll just quick, click take the quiz. Now for the syllabus acknowledgement quiz, there are only two questions and they are the same questions in every class. One is you must mark that you have re received and read the syllabus and click next. And then you also must indicate that you understand what your homework is for the week. You'll click true and then submit. Once you have finished this in the upper right corner, you'll be able to see your score. And if you have another attempt, you can take that quiz again. Obviously we won't do that. I wanna take us back to modules so I can show you that now that syllabus acknowledgement is actually check marked green. That means we're done and look, module one is open. Now in a live class, you won't have them listed as modules, they'll be listed as weeks. Your classes are five weeks long and generally speaking, you'll have one discussion posting for every single week uh, in most of your classes. Occasionally I see where there may be a discussion post not there for a particular week, but we wanna cover a discussion question or assignment within this class because it is quite common and we want you to know what to do. So if you've ever used social media like Facebook or Instagram, where you respond to a thread of comments about a picture or something, it's very similar. Let's go ahead and click on it and take a look. In a discussion question, there is usually a writing prompt, some sort of video that you'll watch or something that you'll read, and then you'll answer a question. The writing prompt here is what is your computer and internet backup plan? So let's take a look at this. So when you're starting school with us, you will need certain resources to be successful. Two big things are internet access and a reliable computer to do your work. There are times throughout your academic career where the internet might get flaky, might not work for a while. Perhaps there's a storm, you get uh, utilities knocked out, maybe your computer breaks. It's really, really good to be thinking now about your backup plan. Can you go to the library? Can you borrow a friend's computer? Can you use someone's hotspot? Those are the kinds of things that you would include in a backup plan. So what this says is basically click the reply button below and share with us the ways you'll maintain access to the classroom. If you're not sure how to post a discussion board, here's a video to show you how to do it. But we're gonna do it live right now. There's other uh, important note here is that many discussion board postings require an initial response of 150 words and then two replies to two other students, um, about 50 words. Your initial posting is due Wednesday in the week. So imagine your week begins Monday and ends on Sunday, right smack dab in the middle of the week is an opportunity for you to attend on Wednesday. And then you wanna reply to two other students by Sunday. So what I would recommend is spread it out a little bit. Do one Wednesday, do one Friday, maybe do one Saturday. Just know there'll be other work. Uh, so you wanna sort of spread it out. When you are ready to reply to your discussion post, and I'm just gonna grab some sample text here to demonstrate, you will come down and, oops, sorry about that. You will click on this reply button. When you click on the reply button right here, 
there we go. We get a nice big dialogue box. I'm going to put some text in here for us. And I want to give you a general idea about what 150, 150 words looks like. So I'm just trying to give you a basic idea. Here we go. That's This is great. So this is about 150 words. It's a short paragraph. And it gives you an idea of how large your initial posting should be. When you are ready to post, you'll just simply click post reply. That message will come down to the very bottom of the thread. And then what will happen is you'll need to go and respond to another student. So let's find, here's Gladys. She has made a post here. If I wanted to reply to her, I'd simply click the reply button and I'd say thanks for sharing. Uh, best of luck in class. So understand that normally when I reply to a student, I want that to be about 50 words. This is only eight. It's a practice class. Just think five decent sentences. That's about 50 words, okay? So when you're ready, you'll simply click post reply. What's different about replying directly to a student is it doesn't go way to the bottom of the thread. It goes right underneath where that person posted. And that's what we see here. All right, so I'm gonna scroll back up here, back to modules. And we are now, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this. We are now on our last assignment here in our example, and that is how to upload an assignment to our Dropbox, okay? So we'll click on this one. There are step-by-step -step instructions here. Uh, there are six of them. I've already prepared steps one and two, but I'll explain what they are. We just want you to try uploading a Word document. So using Microsoft Office, Simply open up Word, open up a new document, type in your name and save it to your computer. Once you've done that, we want you to click on that submit assignment button. I think in some classes it says start assignment in the upper right corner of our screen here. And that's what's outlined here in step three. So let me click on that. And then step four says in the file upload menu at the bottom of the page, click on choose file. Here's my file upload menu, here's choose file. I'm gonna click on that. And it's telling me to go look for my Word document. Okay, so I have my Word document right here. I'll add that. And then I'll click Submit Assignment. Now it tells me to scroll to the top of the page to confirm that assignment's been submitted. I get a little bit of fun confetti. That's always awesome. And then here I can see that assignment is submitted. Now, you'll want to check your grades. We're going to go take a look at where to see grades. But before we do that, I want to click on um, modules just to show you we did everything here. I want to go ahead and continue through the rest of this menu to show you a couple of other things. And then I'm going to show you a live grade book because it has some great examples in it that this class doesn't. So I'm going to take you into a live class to see that. But every class has a Zoom link. When you begin to meet with your instructors on Tuesday, they should be providing their upcoming meetings in here. And what you'll do is if there was a meeting in here, you just simply click on it and access that meeting. This tab will show you any previous meetings that were held. And if your instructor has uploaded any recordings, they would be here. Now I have occasionally come into some classes where the information wasn't here and they've actually posted it in their announcements. So you may need to look there, but when in doubt, if you have a question about the class, you can go to this help button, scroll down to ask your instructor a question, choose your class, and you can let them know, I have a question, I need help, I can't find something, whatever that is, and then you just simply send that message, okay? So that's how easy that is. But I just wanted to point out, here's where those cloud recordings for your um, live sessions should be. If you happen to miss one, you should be able to go in and watch the recording. I'm gonna bypass grades, because I'm like I said, I wanna take you into new a different class for that, but I will go to Pages. Pages is really just a place with different student resources in it. The catalog and handbook are here. Our librarian's information is here, and that's really easy. It's just library at brooklinecollege.edu. On this library resources, down below our librarian are some different databases that we have, but our actual virtual library is here. So just remember your librarian information is in pages and the library is actually here, and they are different. So if I click on library, this is actually all of our databases and you can search them all at the top or you can drill directly into a um, area here and do some searches. Um, our librarian and some of our student services staff are actually working on um, a little video for you, but I will let you know that in the pages area here, 
If we go to library resources and scroll way down to the bottom past the databases, there's actually a little video down here that will show you how to use some of our resources. Just always remember your librarian is here. And if for some reason you can't remember, email us in student services and we'll point that out for you. But a couple of other quick things is the people button will show you everyone who is in your class, okay? And then we went to virtual library. The last thing I want to show you in here before we look at grades and wrap up is I wanna show you BrainView's help now, but I have to leave student view so I can show it to you um, as, a, uh, as a student. So BrainView's help now, as we talked about, is your live tutoring uh, service available for you? And you'll simply come onto this page. You'll be able to see how many minutes you have. It's 180 minutes every month for free that you have, so you're not charged for it. You can come in here and select your topic like English, maybe writing is a concern for you. You can check tutoring availability here. Writing is 24 by seven. Math, as you can see all these subjects, also 24 by seven. There are some topics like medical term and other allied health stuff that you really need to come in and plan ahead because it isn't as frequent. Sunday through Thursday, four to nine mountain time. Uh, I think that's maybe three to eight <laughs> Pacific time. Anyway, the other thing you can do in here is make sure that you select tutoring with audio because it will make your session more successful. You'll get your questions answered faster. And if I were to actually come in here and click on English and writing, I can actually add tutoring with audio and then click connect. You will be connected to a whiteboard. You'll have the ability to initiate audio with your phone up here um, if that person has it available. Then there's a place here for you to file upload. If you want to actually call from your computer, you can. You can have the system call you by putting in your number or you can display this access number. Those are the, some of the ways that you can actually make a call. I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of this, but just giving you that a uh, little bit of background. Now, um, just very briefly, I want to show you the grade book and then we'll get ourselves wrapped up for today, okay? And we hope to see you tomorrow if you are able to attend uh, to get your troubleshooting, um, you know, get into your account and all that sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll be taking questions. But first, I want to show you a sample grade book. So just bear with me here and I will get us into a class where we can see grades. Just a quick review here. And I'm just about ready to share. Here we go. All right, perfect. So when you're in a classroom, remember we saw modules and all these things. You wanna look for grades in your uh, course navigation. And you'll notice that when you get into the grade book, you'll see each of your assignments named here on the left, but they'll actually be sorted by your second column, which is your due date. So we can see May 2nd, May 9th, the 16th and so on. When you start to scroll through here, you'll also notice that there are some scores and here is the total possible point. So this one is the one that the student didn't receive full points for. It was 9.6 points out of 10. And if we keep scrolling down, you'll notice a couple of other things. Here we have a line. What that indicates is that has not been submitted at all by the student, but that's fine. It's not due for three more days. However, the student has completed this it just hasn't been graded yet. This is a discussion. So the icon we see is sort of like a chat bubble. Whereas if this was actually submitted by the student, it would look like a little icon of a piece of paper. So that's the difference. A line means you haven't turned it in. The icon of a paper or a chat bubble means you've turned it in, it just hasn't been graded yet. And then anything with a number has been graded. If I scroll down to the bottom, I will be able to see where, I'm, where I am at overall for the class. And this particular student is earning a B. So doing good above 70%. And that is basically how or what the grade book looks like. Now we've covered a ton of things today. So I realize your head might be swimming a little bit. We, we introduced you to a few important contacts here at the school. We talked about the academic requirements and the importance of passing your classes. We talked about how to activate your student account and log into the portal. So it's a lot of information. We know it might be overwhelming. Just know that we're here for you if you do need help. Um, some of the things that we'd love to see you do uh, over the weekend um, or even tomorrow, ideally, while we're still here to help uh, is to activate your office account, log into the student portal, um, access the classroom that we showed you, and then reach out to us with the student services group here at online. 
if you have questions because your first classes start on Tuesday and we're gonna be here to help you then as well. So um, what I'd like to do now is just open up for some Q&A. I am seeing some messages back and forth. Um, anything that anyone needs help with, Michelle or uh, Jamie that I have not answered. No, actually the chat has been pretty quiet, which means that it's been very thorough. Fabulous. Well, that's what I'm assuming. That's, that's really great to hear. And we know um, what I'll be doing everyone tomorrow is I'm gonna be just spot checking all of you to make sure it looks like you've gotten in. And if you have not been gotten in and Misty, great question, I'll get right to that. But if you haven't been able to get in, we will probably be proactively reaching out to you because we'll be able to see that you haven't been able to get in yet. Misty has a great question. She says, do we need to complete the Canvas course that, that we just showed you, or is that just a practice class? It is a practice class. It is just to make sure that your technology is working with our system. We'd rather fix it before classes start than after. So that's why. And Burnett, I'm really glad to hear you got on the dashboard. That's fantastic. So if anyone else needs anything, just know we're here tomorrow. Um, once we wrap up, we are, yeah, I know. It is hard to write about laptop and internet connection. No problem, <laughs> you're good. Um, we will be reaching out to you with some invites for tomorrow. So. Don't be a stranger, reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help you. And I do wanna thank you for attending tonight. I wanna to thank Jamie, Dr. Q and Michelle for being here and know that it takes a village and we are your village. So let us be here for you and support you through this, um, through your education. Anything you'd like to close with Jamie? No, just that, um, you know, we're like you said, we're here for you and thanks everyone for attending because this is really important. It's all about feeling really comfortable and confident when you get into that classroom. Um, your faculty member is your first point of contact. I, I think that's the, the one takeaway that I want you to really have is yep. that build that relationship from day one with them and they'll be able to maneuver and guide you, you know, the right way as well. So um, have a wonderful, wonderful evening and enjoy the extended holiday break. Absolutely. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, we are here tomorrow. So we're mm -hmm. all working uh, tomorrow but then we will be off uh, for the three-day weekend. So please get your questions in uh, before then. Yes, and Jonica had a great question. This is being recorded and the recording will be sent out tomorrow. And we have a recording just on the tech pieces too. So whatever you need from us, we will get that to you, Jonica, not a problem at all. And again, thanks, thanks everybody for being here. We'll go ahead and let you go for the evening. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow and Tuesday. So have a wonderful holiday weekend. We'll see you very soon. Thanks everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.